I understand you've been thinking about starting beekeeping. If you're watching this video, you are probably. <laughs> well, I'm just kind of cleaning up here, getting ready to go into the bees. Kind of clean this area because, well, that's just what I do. Let's get uh, let's get started here. I'm Richard, and I'm a beekeeper for five years, six years, six years now. Started 2019, got the idea in 2018. When I got the idea, it was about this time of year, so it was a good time to start. So let's talk about it. Uh, I've got about five different things I can go over today, and maybe we'll get into bees and inspect them. Show you what it's like to be a beekeeper. But before we get started, I just want to say I'm Richard. I've been keeping bees for about six years. And the first thing we're going to do is talk about smokers. That's one of the important tools we have. And this is not necessarily in any particular order, but it is one that I use a lot. So the first thing we got is this is more of a professional one. If you're going to have three to five hives, then you could probably get along with this one here. But if you're going to have more than that, you're going to want a smoker that lasts a little longer. And if you think you might in the future need to have a smoker that's the larger size, more professional, then I would go ahead and get it because it's probably about $10 or more. That will save you in the future. Because one thing you don't want to do is be inspecting about five or six different hives and you have a smoker to go out and you have to go find some fuel on a, a rainy or cloudy day that you never know what's going to happen. So let's, let's start with a smoker, and I'm going to start with my larger one. Basically, what you want to do is get something started at the bottom. So generally, I'll take a little bit of newspaper, or in this case, I'm going to just stick some pine needles in there that I've gathered up. Let's straighten them much and see if we can't get it going. Sometimes you just drop the match in, it's not going to work. So, you want to start your fire. Look at that. It's going, it's going to work fine. Now, in order to help this along in the event that it doesn't work so well, I usually have some little toilet paper rolls. And then, my fire is working here, so I can just stick that in there. And that will catch fire. And hopefully, I'm watching. Yep, it went out. Or it did it. No, it's still burning. So now we've got to start. The toilet paper roll acts as a little chimney. So I really like those to, to start my smoker with. So we've got a good little flame going there. And so we can now. Just for the fun of it, and another toilet paper roll, a little more chimney. Ooh, smoking right in my face. So now we got a good fire going. Kind of a base. So now there's other things we can do. We take little sticks in here from rotting wood, and that's a good base too. Pine needles. There's pine needles a favorite. <laughs> Smoker, you know, because it works really well and usually available. Sorry about the airplane. You know, back when I started, when I moved here, when I built this house, there weren't any airplanes. If you saw an airplane, it was really unusual. But population has changed. People have been moving up into this area, and we have a lot more people moving in to the neighborhood. There were only about three houses here when I moved. And now there's like 20. So, as you can see, my smoker's doing well here. And that's really all it takes. Now you can use pellets or something like that, or more wood, like this. But you gotta be careful because you don't want the fire to be too hot. Because you don't want to burn your, the wings on your bees or the bees themselves. So, in fact, it's pretty good. 
And that's going to last probably two or three hours. As long as you don't stuff it too tight. Stuff it too tight. Or if your pine needles are wet, you could go out. There are things you want to start your smoker where you're not being in danger of starting a fire outside of your smoker. But you can see this smoke is doing really good. And I can put my hand right in. It's only warm. A little bit moist even. So there must be a little bit of moisture in these pine needles still. And that'll last all day. Well, at least for what I'm going to do. And you just put it like that. And you're done. The same thing with this little one, same principle, works just fine. The next tool I want to show you is a hive tool. Now there's two different kinds that I have. This is what I got originally. You can see the little hook here. It's uh, for getting in between frames, and I'll show you how that works when we go into a hive a little bit later. This one here I like a little better. I like this hook here. It's a little, I don't know, it's just a little bit longer. It gets a little further, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it gets a little further under the frame, so it's easier to pull it out. Yeah. Another tool will be your bee brush. That's for brush brushing the bees off of your frames if you want to see what's going on there. I don't know how often use the brush because I can just shake them off or if I'm going to do some honey harvest, then I might brush them off just the last few after I've shook them off. Another tool we're going to have is your bee jacket, or your bee suit, or just a veil. Well, it depends on what you want, how your comfort zone is. Mine is, I need a jacket and a veil. So I put this on like this, and zipper it up, and then if I'm real comfortable, that's probably all I need. But some days, like today, I'm going to be a little more deep in the hive. So I'm probably going to wear the next tool, which is the gloves. A lot of people who have been beekeeping for years and years and years don't use gloves. Because it's more easy to get to the frames, lift them out. And the thing is, they do get stung. And I don't like getting stung because... Well, when I first started, I would swell up like crazy and be five or six days of itching. I've gotten more immune to that, so I can get stung now, now and then. And that usually happens when one gets on my outside of my bee suit and I take it off and the bee discovers that, hey, here's open flesh. <laughs> so anyway, when I'm reaching down in the beehive, I generally want to have a pair of gloves on. I'm just that way. And that maybe one day I'll get over that, but six years in, I still don't like getting stung. And I don't get stung near as much as a commercial beast keeper does. Even now, if I get stung, it probably lasts, the pain lasts maybe an hour, and not very much. And then I'll swell up a little bit, and sometimes not so much, depending where I got stung. If it's on my fingers, well, it's probably not going to be hurting much. But if I get under my underarm, or if they crawl up my pant leg, well then, yeah, that's going to st stick around for a few days, and I don't like that. So I just now pumped up the smoker a little bit. As you can see, we've got plenty of smoke yet. You just need to do that every 15, 20 minutes. If you're not using it, that'll keep the fire going if you've got a good stuffing of uh, pine needles in there. Another tool we'll need is a mite test. This is a little container, a Varroa mite easy check. And I'm not sponsored by this, but it's got a little container here where you put some alcohol in the bottom. You scoop up a half a cup of bees, and you drop this in here and cover it up before they can fly away. And you cover it up and then you shake it for, I think it's one minute. I can't remember right now. I think it's a minute. I'm not going to be doing that today unless I actually find a queen and I decide that's what I want to do. But every once in a while you need to check your bees for burrow mites. 
that's number one killer of bees, right along with starvation if you don't have enough food in there for them. If they don't gather enough honey, you have to give them sugar water. And usually that's a mix of one to one. One part of water and one part of sugar. That's another video we'll talk about one day. So let's go get into bees. Sure enough, my microphone wasn't on, so I'm going to do this over again. This little hive is a split that I made, a walk away split about June 1st, I think it was. And I came back around, uh, say, June 15 and looked in again and didn't see any activity towards the queen. So we're going to assume that she was on her mating flight. But just in case, I put in some brood, an extra frame of brood in there, open brood that they can make a queen from if they wanted to. Now, the other thing is, I put a frame of good honey in there to make sure they had plenty to eat. I didn't fill up the sugar feeder, I was, had that honey in there. What eventually I want to do is have this double deep hive for winter. So today I'll decide whether I want to put another super on here and make it a double deep. But for now, we're just going to see what's going on. So let me get my smoker. Now, a while ago, I showed you at the smoker how to start it. As you can see, it's still going good almost two hours later. So, let's give them a little bit of smoke. You don't need much. Again, this is a cool smoke. It's not going to be very much smoke at all. It gives them a time to the little 30 seconds or so to, to think about it and say, Hey, is the place on fire or what? So, I think they're ready now. Uh, let me see what they look like. Oh yeah, they're kind of way inside or flew away, so let me open it up. Oh boy, it's packed. That's good. So, yeah, I think we're going to be good here. Now, will, will we see a queen? Will we see brood? All we need to do is see brood. We'll give them a little bit more smoke. So, I'm going to start on this side because this is the side that doesn't just had the uh, drawn comb on it and I don't want to be squashing the queen because she's likely in the middle or on the other side if we have a queen. So far there's nothing there. However, there is some nectar in here. So they've been drawing on nectar the last few weeks. That's good. Let me see if I, I don't think the queen's going to be here but I'm going to take a little better look. Mostly because I'm on camera. Because I think what I'm going to find is that there might be a little brood in there and they don't have to worry about it. But yeah, this looks good. So we'll just set that aside for now. And we want to do this if we're not touching anything at all that it has, doesn't have to. So we make it where you just put it on the edge. So that's not disturbing the bees at all. They don't even know what's going on yet. So here we go one more time. This one's got some more in it too. Yeah, they've been bringing in some pollen, even in the dirt we've been having. So that's good. Ever so gently. Now, I've got enough out here that I don't have to hang it to the side or anything. Again, they're putting in a lot of nectar in there, so it's growing, and I'd say by now we're about 70% full on this 8 frame hive. There's two ways I can go. I can make it a 10 frame, add two more frames to it, give them a little more room, or, uh oh, what's that? Well, I thought for a minute it was nectar. I mean, for a minute there I thought it was some brood, but no, it's not. Look on the other side. Yeah, they're really packing this thing in. It's going good, so. We have the sourwood coming in shortly. So that should keep them going. So I think I can put a second deep on here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put another deep on here. Make sure they have room. Now it takes 16 days to raise the queen. 
from the time the egg is laid. Oh, there's a lot of pollen, pollen in here. The egg had been laid about four days when I put that frame in here. So we still have time. They might make a queen. Okay, this is the one. Now if I opened this up and saw a lot of drone brood, then we'd have a laying worker. So this one here is the one I put in with the brood in it. Most of it's already hatched out, and I'm not seeing any new brood. So I'm thinking, we'll let this go another week and see what's going on then. If they don't have a new queen by then, or I don't see any evidence of it, I have to start thinking about getting a new queen. Oh, whoa, whoa, what's this? I got a full frame of brood here. Now, I don't see anything new, but that's encouraging. Maybe this is the one I put in there. I don't know. But I don't see any queen cells, so that indicates to me that maybe there was an, a virgin queen in here, and just now she's on her mating flight. Who knows? We're still a little early yet. So we'll see. I like this. This looks really nice. I see that bee would have stung me probably. <laughs> I probably squashed her a little bit. I don't think so. Oh, that's heavy. That's that honey one. Yeah, that's doing good too. So, so far we don't have a queen. But, I think we've got a 70% full brood chamber here. So now what I want to do is add another deep body so they can work on that. It won't give them any desire to swarm. Which they probably won't anyway because they don't have anything to swarm with yet. I don't think that'd be what they'd be doing anyway. But I don't want to take any chances. So we set that off together nicely. And one more thing I want to do when I'm thinking about it is just pull this reducer out. And it's just got enough room for one bee sway space. And I can't even get it in there. So I'm going to see if I can't work it out another way. Oh, I broke it. Oh well. Well, that'll give them plenty of sp space. <laughs> Good. I know. Looks like I'd already repaired that once. Well, they have plenty of room now to fly back and forth. So let me put another super on there. Here's another tool we use. This is a queen excluder. But at this point, I don't want to use it. So there's another bonus tip. This is something that you don't think about when you're buying bees. Well, am I going to need this? Oh, I don't know. So it's, you buy the hive, and then you buy the tools, you buy the bees. Pretty soon you're in debt for, you know, $20,000 like me. <laughs> or more. But I'm making mine back now because I'm getting honey and I'm selling bees. So I just happen to have a hive body here, right close by. And I think up here I've got some, another hive, I've got some frames, so let me just see. Why, yes I did. So I've got six regular frames, and they're undrawn, so one of them is a drone frame. I don't want that. I don't want that at this point. So I'm going to put these in here. I'm going to go get some more and put in, let's see, I need, I got five, I need three more. Well, we're in luck. 
I found five rings of drawn comb. So that means I need three of these. I put them on the outside. That'll give bees an opportunity to work. But you can see, this is this is foundation. Nothing there, just foundation. Plastic foundation, wax coated. But these are ones that they've already drawn out from another hive. That'll save the bees a lot of work. So they'll go right to work on this, I'm pretty sure. Especially as this sourwood flow comes on. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames in there. And we move them to the middle. And we're good to go. There's a little uh, wax on this I'm going to scrape off. Now, the bees will have an opportunity there. Just go ahead and hit, get right started on it. Filling it up. Put this back on. It's empty. This feeder is empty. But uh, since they're bringing in their own stuff, really don't need it. So the bees have brought this in and they've got most of the bottom super full and now they have five frames of drawn comb and three frames of undrawn comb. That'll give them something to do until we get back here and check in a couple weeks. I have a couple more times to check. I'll do that before I go. And thank you for watching. Please subscribe. It helps me out a lot encourages me to make more videos. Yay!